Tuesday. I hope you all are doing wonderful. So today I am back with an update on this hair from Ronnie Hair that I shared with you on Sunday. So because I prepped the hair in that video, I showed you guys how to prep it for a glueless install prior to wearing it glueless. All I had to do today was just pop it on my head. I have been taking this wig off at night just because if it's glueless, it's just going to probably move around anyways. This is a 360 lace wig. I highly recommend you go check out my first video so that you can get all the details on how I installed this hair and also how this hair looks straight out the box. Now this type of style is good for anyone who is looking for really long lengths. I love the construction of how this hair is ventilated into the wig. With a six inch deep parting, you can part it. The hair did come with a pre-plucked hairline. You really don't have to do much. As far as the bleaching the knots, I did bleach the knots prior to Sunday's video because I always bleach the knots on all of my wigs. And I did wash the hair prior to Sunday's video. However, the hair, I just love the hair on this wig because even after washing, it was not frizzy. It may vary from wig to wig just because, you know, hair comes from different donors. The density on this wig is very lightweight. It's very breathable. Um, I love how flat it lay. You definitely want to make sure your hair is laying flat. All right, so now I'm gonna show you all how I reinstalled this hair. So as you guys seen Sunday, I put the scar away method inside this wig. I'm just going to go ahead and remove the scar away. Now, if you come back Thursday, I will be talking more details on how it held up. Um, so yeah, I washed this wig and I use the same products um, I used last week. I use the same products all the time, to be honest. Um, so I just washed in conditioner, washed this wig. Now I'm going to blow dry it. I do prefer to air dry. However, if I'm in a rush, I take a blow dryer to it and I blow dry the hair in sections. Be sure to check that description box. I will put all of my favorite products and tools that I use on the hair down there if you guys want them. So yeah, let's jump into the install. Before I do today's install, I'm going to sew in the fake scalp material into this wig. So I went to my fabric store and I picked out some thread that I felt like would be helpful if you are looking to sew the fake scalp material yourself or re-sew yours if it was to come out. So the threads that I recommend are the light colored ones. But So I did have to take the wig off camera to sew it because I needed to be able to see exactly what I was doing so I wouldn't mess it up. Now when I cut my material I cut it for a 13 by 6 cap. I did not want to waste it. I forgot that this wig is a 360 wig. <laughs> So um, that's why it is not covering everything. However, it doesn't matter because it's still going to provide the coverage that I need. So again, the fake scalp material will be below and yeah. So today's install is definitely going to be glueless. I have a new product that I'm excited about trying out for today's application because it is completely 100% non-adhesive. Before I talk about that, I do want to talk about the fake scalp insert. I showed you guys what type of thread you need, the options that you have. A lot of companies use the clear thread when they are doing the fake scalp method inside of the wigs. If you watch my original video on the fake scalp method that I did a couple of years ago, you will notice that when you sew the cap, you definitely are sewing through the lace, which does not affect the hair at all. When you're combing the hair, when if you are tweezing the hairline on your wigs, it's a possibility that you could be popping the threads on the fake scalp, which could cause your fake scalp to come out of the wigs. So the reason I say that is because I have done it. Before I started this video, I was taking my comb through it and it got caught. So this is the reason why the fake scalp insert may come out of your wig early. I just showed you all how to sew it back in. So if that happens, you guys can reference this video on how to put it back in. And I also have another video sharing how I use regular threads. So this hair I did wash. Um, as you guys seen, I did blow dry it. I have not took a flat iron through it. I, I recommend for you to check out my first video if you would like to see the wig straight out the box. For today's wig application, I am using the Wig Dealer. This is a melting spray. This was actually recommended by my niece. She asked me to try it out, so that's what we're going to do in today's video. It has an ultimate hold melting spray designed to keep lace in place. It provides a strong hold, yet removes easily. 
Protect your edges, remove by shampooing. See how I use this in today's video for this glueless non-adhesive application. The way you apply this wig spray is either under the lace like you would do the got to be sprays or you can apply it over top of the lace and that is the way I've seen a lot of people do it when applying it. So that's what I'm doing. I'm just spraying it on the lace and it's supposed to melt down the lace. Now the difference between this spray and the, the got to be spray or any other hairspray is that it's not as sticky and it's very comfortable to wear throughout the day. I also cannot tell if it melts the lace just because the lace on this wig is a bit darker than my complexion so I can't really see how well it melts. However, I do notice that the dry time is very fast. So once you spray it, you tie it down for 15 minutes and you really don't have to, but if you want it to lay as flat as possible, you can do that. Um, and then after that, you get up and go and it holds throughout the day. Now, as you guys seen, I put that fake scalp method on the inside of this wig. So this is what it is looking like compared to that scar away. As you can see, it definitely helps with matching that lace color because I put the right color in there. Um, however, this is what the hairline looks like after I have tied it down for about 15 minutes. The only thing I do notice with this wig so far is that it do have a bit of flyaways at the top right here in the back where the wefts begin. So I just kind of took some scissors and cut there, but yeah, you can kind of see them right there. This wig is a 24 inch wig. I said 26 in my last video, but I put it in the description box the correct length. Uh, so it's actually a 24 inch and the 24 inch is a bit pricey. It's about two, two something I believe. You can check the description box. So the lengths are between eight to 24 if you are looking or interested. But I still love the fact that I don't really have to flat iron this hair. For All right, so this is what the wig application looks like. Definitely very secure. Because with this wig, I did the scar away method inside of here and I also just did the fake scalp method. Thursday, I'm gonna come back and going to do an update and share with you guys my thoughts on the scar away and how it performed for the couple of days that I did wear. And I'm also going to share with you how it compares to the fake scalp insert. And I absolutely love this sleek style. I will be sure to put this wig below in the description box. I will also put the melting spray that I used in today's video in the description box for you all. So yeah, be sure to check that description box. Give this video a thumbs up, subscribe if you are new to my channel and I will see you all back in my next video.